Uh, thanks very much for coming. Um, as everybody here probably knows, the National Weather Service uh, issued a winter storm uh, warning uh, for Cleveland that's going to last until about 9 a.m. Uh, this Wednesday. The county and our whole emergency response team is monitoring things uh, uh, on a really minute-by-minute -minute basis to make sure that we're responding in an appropriate way uh, to serious weather conditions. Right now, it's about uh, zero degrees uh, Fahrenheit. The forecasts are that uh, we're going to see wind, chill, uh, wind chills reaching as low as uh, 30 or 40 um, degrees. Uh, we expect that to continue um, until about Wednesday uh, morning. It's, it's basically, look, we're used to cold weather here, or we wouldn't live here. We know that. Uh, that's what we signed up for. Uh, but these are the lowest that we've seen in uh, in in this county in about in about 20 years. So it's important that we get accurate information uh, and that people use appropriate um, caution. Earlier today, I issued what's called a, a shelter in place advisory for residents of Cuyahoga County. It simply means that people should stay in their homes unless they have a very good reason uh, to leave. They should be uh, monitoring. Uh, uh, the media for up-to-date information and they should be um, just prepared to wait out the situation um, until it breaks which we hope will be um, early Wednesday. Um, we have some folks here from our leadership team that are going to talk about some specifics about the way that the county is responding to this crisis. I will say in terms of the county operation uh, itself, um, we just got uh, word that uh, the court system is going to be uh, closing uh, tomorrow so we just got notice about that. Um, we may be closing all county services. We're going to know that um, shortly. Um, I'm not making that announcement here today. We're going to make that decision um, before 3 o'clock today. So we'll let county employees know and all the people we serve whether or not we'll be open uh, tomorrow. As you know, most school systems um, are closed, if not all of them are going to be closed um, tomorrow. Uh, you're going to hear from, uh, in a moment, from Walter Topp. He's the director of our Office of Emergency Management. He's here with us today. They're going to be open, first of all, the, the emergency management team is going to be open uh, for extended hours, again, at least until Wednesday. People can call them for information at 216-443-5700. We also serve, not everybody knows this, but the county serves the homeless men and women uh, that reside in Cuy Cuyahoga County. There's over 2,000 of them here in Cuyahoga County. Um, we do have enough beds uh, in, in our shelters to serve this population, and you're going to hear in a moment from uh, Ruth Gillette. She's from our Office of Homeless Services because they are a, a particularly uh, vulnerable population when we have a serious weather crisis like we're dealing with. Um, right now, you'll hear more about that in just a couple of minutes. You're also going to hear from uh, Tracy Mason. She's our administrator for the Division of Senior and Adult Services. Again, another vulnerable uh, population. Uh, there are going to be services available, such as uh, the homemaking services that we provide for seniors, um, uh, and we're still anticipating that we're going to be able to provide our home-delivered meals for those seniors that uh, rely on that service as well. So you'll hear from her um, in a moment. Uh, if you have elderly residents, though, that are in your neighborhood that you have contact with, it, it might be a good idea uh, to check in with them. It's a humane thing to do, and again, this is uh, a circumstance where I'm sure they would appreciate it, and I think that just makes um, common sense. I didn't mention this yet, but we also have, of course, the Public Works Department. As individual cities uh, need help from us uh, for things that uh, may arise, um, we are going to be uh, ready and uh, standing by um, to help them. Cities are the primary providers, as you probably know, of your day-to-day -day services when it comes to snow removal, but we're also available uh, for uh, emergency help, whether it's uh, ice and snow or flooding or, or tree removal or, or things of that nature. Because this is most, mostly a, uh, a freeze situation, uh, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing typically, but it doesn't mean that something might uh, not arise and we will be standing, on, standing by to assist any, any city in Cuyahoga County of any of the 59 cities that request our help. Um, at this point, I want to turn it over to uh, Walter Topp. He's our Director of Office the Office of Emergency Management uh, to expand on um, what I've said here today. Walter, thank you. Uh, again, my name is Walter Topp, T-O-P-P. -P. I'm the Administrator from the Office of Emergency Management. Okay. And as we have a, our top man working on this situation. <laughs> okay. And, and as a uh, <laughs> as uh, executive Vice chair will just mentioned, we actually work uh, with uh, the public safety agencies at the 59 municipalities of the county, uh, and we've been in contact with them 
uh, five or six times since Friday about this storm to make sure that uh, they understand what we can do and that they are as prepared. Uh, we've sent a lot of information to them, to ask them to share with their residents. Uh, and some of those tips we could go over briefly, briefly now. And, uh, and the main thing we would ask, encourage people to do is to stay inside. You know, it's, it's very cold. It's colder than it's been here in a long time. Uh, as we heard, which we're used to the cold, but not this kind of cold. This kind of cold can cause uh, frostbite damage uh, on exposed skin uh, within minutes. So we really encourage people to uh, shelter in place, to stay inside. Uh, if, also, uh, we say bring, make sure you bring your pets inside. Uh, and uh, uh, and as again, as uh, Mr. Fitzgerald mentioned, uh, please check on uh, relatives, neighbors, especially elderly people. Elderly people and very young people are more susceptible to the health effects of extreme cold. And so we would uh, encourage everyone to check on the neighbors, check on their family members, uh, and check on their friends. If you have to go outside, uh, wear layers of loose-fitting clothing. Uh, make sure you have a scarf on to protect your lungs. Uh, a hat is absolutely essential to prevent heat loss uh, through your head. Uh, and uh, if possible, wear mittens instead of gloves. But all of you, are, you should have as little exposed skin as possible if you have to be outside. Even inside, uh, this kind of cold can be dangerous. Uh, some, some homes will have faulty heating systems. Uh, some people may lose power. Uh, and uh, while you're inside your home, uh, we would encourage you to keep people, uh, try to keep people in one room, seal off any unused rooms, uh, use uh, whatever you have. Uh, if you haven't really insulated or, or had an opportunity yet to seal windows, uh, you might want to do that. Uh, you know, duct tape and plastic is a good, uh, uh, expedient if you don't have anything, if you don't have caulk or weather stripping insulation to use. Uh, with primarily, uh, two things to keep in mind, uh, the risk of fire and risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. If in fact you're going to use a, an external heat source or an additional heat source in your home, uh, make sure that you use the, uh, you know, use it as it's uh, directed, as it's intended to be used. So don't put, uh, you know, don't experiment with different fuels in a space heater. Use the, the fuel that the heater is designed to use. And make sure that the room, uh, make sure that any kind of heating system you use, any kind of, ex any kind of additional heating system is vented properly. Because carbon monoxide poisoning uh, can be, uh, you know, you may be warm, but uh, you could also be dead if you're not careful with uh, the carbon monoxide. Uh, never use a, uh, an outside uh, grill uh, indoors. You know, and make sure that any space heaters are not, uh, not piled on top of anything flammable, or not piled on top of furniture, you know, and obviously keep children away from uh, heat sources like that. Okay. That, would really, that would really be the uh, gist of what we would want people to keep in mind. Uh, and, okay. and now I can uh, hear from Ms. Gillette. Yeah, uh, uh, Ruth Gillette, again, uh, dealing with our uh, uh, homeless population is going to mention a few words about how we can make sure that we're, we're protecting them as best we can in this circumstance. Ruth, go ahead. The community has over 2,000 emergency shelter beds that are available on a nightly basis. And with the City of Cleveland, uh, there's a community policy to never turn anyone away who's seeking shelter, and that would absolutely be the case in this weather as well. So um, our issue, in addition to the uh, year-round beds, we have the capacity through public funding, both the Health and Human Services levy and federal emergency shelter grant funds to provide overflow shelter in the community. So capacity is not a concern. We really would like you know, people who need shelter to come to the uh, shelters. Uh, 2100 Lakeside for men and the Norma Her Women's Center at 2227 Payne Avenue for single women and for families. And again, no one will be turned away um, and shelter will be provided. For those people who are in the shelter, uh, the policy in cold weather is to not require people to leave. So people will be able to be in shelter if they're homeless uh, during the day. Um, the City of Cleveland, the Regional Transit Authority, uh, Downtown Cleveland Alliance, Care Alliance, the VOA, and Frontline Service are all coordinating to help identify people who are homeless on the street and provide transportation to them to come into shelter. That is really the issue uh, for people who are homeless, people who don't normally access shelter and who may be out on the street. And so there's a real concerted effort to uh, find people 
and then arrange transportation uh, to get them to a shelter. And uh, Latanya Murray from Frontline Services here, uh, Frontline manages the Norma Her Women's Center, and Mike Searing is off camera, but he's here from 2100 Lakeside. And the other thing I wanted to mention, um, there has been uh, a significant number of people that have been calling wanting to donate blankets and coats and hats. LMM has offered to coordinate uh, accepting those donations. Uh, people can just drop them off at 2100 Lakeside Avenue, and uh, it's 24-7, and LMM will manage distribution of those items. Thank you. Great. Uh, I want to recognize um, uh, Tracy Mason again. She's dealing with our senior population from Department of Senior and Adult Services. Tracy. We are in touch with all the municipality senior centers throughout Cuyahoga County. We are trying to make sure we understand what services are available. In the event that a senior center is closed and the senior is without heat, we are asking them to contact Red Cross. We recognize the important needs of staying warm. Also, we are a linkage to resources. So if other community providers or residents are in need of resources that are available, they may contact Senior Adult Services and we will be sure to get them linked to adequate services out in the community. Thank you. I, I just want to reiterate too that when we talked about the, you know, the county may be closed today, we'll make an announcement on that in an hour or so um, after we review all the facts and the latest weather reports, but that doesn't go for the folks that are, are providing this kind of emergency assistance and emergency response. They, uh, they never get a day off, uh, so they will be here. So for the, for the services that we mentioned, um, that, that, that we're going to continue to provide those services um, regardless of the, of the of the weather conditions, um, any any questions anybody has at this time? Thanks for coming out. Appreciate it.